it's even more important in a year in which we've had COVID and a lot of the people that are affected by that lower income people have huge diaper needs. They're even greater than they were before. So I'm, I'm not going to read this, this whole bit. I am going to say that uh, I'm just going to read the, these last parts. Whereas Green River is proud to be the home to trusted community-based organizations, including the Community Diaper Bank of Southwest Wyoming, Wyoming, that recognize the importance of diapers in ensuring health and providing economic stability for families and thus distribute diapers to families through various channels. And whereas these diaper banks and their staff and volunteers serve on the front lines of Green River COVID-19 pandemic response, helping families in our communities weather the crisis, and whereas while experiencing double, triple, or greater increase in demand for diapers due to the pandemic and economic shutdown, these diaper banks did everything in their ability to increase diaper distributions and support children and families in need of immediate assistance. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Pete Rust, Mayor of the City of Green River, do hereby proclaim the week of September 27th through October 3rd is Diaper Need Awareness Week in the city of Green River and thank the aforementioned diaper banks, their staff, volunteers, and encourage the citizens of Green River to donate generously to diaper banks, diaper drives, and those organizations that collect and distribute diapers to those struggling with diaper need so that all of Green River's children and families can thrive and reach their full potential. Shelley? Thank you, Mayor Rust and Council. Thank you for letting me um, attend tonight. I just want to take a second to thank you first for everything you do for us. It's really important. Um, the diaper banks are really important addition to our communities and very much needed. Last year in 2020, we distributed 60,202 diapers across Sweetwater County um, to 354 children in our communities. And we know that that need doesn't change. It's it's continuing to grow. It, it, it's just what it is, but we couldn't do it without the support that we get from you and our donors. Um, we are running a citywide, a countywide diaper drive through that week, September 27th through October 3rd. And in Green River, we have drop-off locations at the library, uh, Fremont Therapy Group, and the Green River Recreation Center. So if anybody wants to drop off diapers or if they want me to pick them up, they can call the United Way office and I will come and pick up diapers. We take opened unused diapers if your child goes to bed in a size two and they wake up in a size three we will take those diapers because we repackage them and put them out in the community so, but again thank you for everything you do and thank you for this okay thank you shelly let's take a picture and get this promoted <laughs> okay. Okay, size five is the most needed, so that's what I'll be getting, but um okay next up is uh presentations item a wyoming against gas chambers and whoever would like to speak to this issue just step right forward you guys make sure that the mic's on for okay is it on Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and the City Council members and the staff. 
I am from Rock Springs, and today I am here on behalf of Wyoming Against Gas Chambers. We are a group of Wyoming residents working towards making gas chamber euthanasia illegal across the state of Wyoming in the city shelters. We have some people from the group present today um, to support this cause, the folks in white shirts and the people behind me. Um, Thank you for having me here today and giving me a chance to speak regarding this issue. I will briefly talk about the operation and practice of the gas chamber euthanasia method that is currently being used in Green River Animal Control. Then I will play a three and a half minute uh, slideshow. It's a short slideshow regarding this issue. And the purpose of this presentation is to educate and bring awareness in the community about this crucial issue. There are three main reasons why we want, uh, want to eliminate carbon monoxide gas chamber euthanasia method from Green River Animal Control. The first reason is this method is inhumane and cruel to animals. The second one is it can be physically and psychologically harmful to the shelter workers. And the third is it is cost ineffective. I will briefly elaborate on each of these uh, reasons. We believe that the method of euthanasia, uh, this method of euthanasia is inhumane because it causes significant distress to animals in the shelter and it does not offer quick and certain death. Mr. Mayor, most of the animals who enter the shelters are already nervous and stressed because of the strange and new environment they are brought in. A lot of them have already experienced neglect and abuse in their lives. In addition, some of them are sick, injured, or too young, old, or have respiratory or lung diseases or heart diseases. When these animals are placed in the gas chamber, it takes longer for the gas to reach their lungs. The gas is supposed to reach their lungs in certain concentration and at a, at a controlled rate. But when multiple animals with with already compromised mental and physical states are placed in the chamber together. This, this is not giving them a humane or gentle death. Inside the chamber, out of fear, some start fighting with others and some constantly claw on chamber walls in desperation to get out. They can suffer convulsions, vomiting, and even muscular spasms. Since not all animals are checked by veterinarians, or any veterinarian at the shelter before being placed in the gas chamber. These uh, the exact age or the proper age or their medical conditions are unknown to the staff. According to the Green River Animal Control policies, seven animals can be loaded in one euthanasia cycle at a time. And any animal over six weeks, year, uh, six weeks old can be placed legally in the gas chamber. This method is also outdated. Most of the states have banned this practice because it's so cruel and inhumane. Only four states in America use this. That is Ohio, Wyoming, Missouri, and, and Utah. And only in Wyoming, there are only two cities that's Green River and Evanston use this practice. Gas chamber euthanasia can be physically and psychologically harmful to the shelter workers. Carbon monoxide gas is tasteless, odorless, and colorless, so it's very difficult to detect. It's also highly toxic at even very low concentrations. Its exposure in even small quantities and on a regular basis can cause serious health problems in humans. Shelter workers are exposed to this gas in very small amounts regularly while unloading the dead animals from the ch uh, chamber cabinet. According to the city's public records, Green River Animal Control purchased its chamber in March 1985. So it is more than 36 years old machine. There is a significant cost associated with machinery of uh, that old. Even minor leaks can, can, can be hazardous to shelter workers, visitors, and volunteers. And it can also cause inconsistency in gas concentrations that can, that can increase suffering uh, and that can increase suffering and stress in the animals before death. Being understaffed and under-resourced, 
being understaffed and under stores is like every day's struggle for um, most of the city shelters across the country. These factors can affect the working condition and maintenance of the gas chamber, which is being used right now by Green River Animal Control. Shelter staff also have to handle transport and place animals, uh, even aggressive or fearful, stressful animals into the gas chamber. And that can result in scratches or bites or other accidents. People mostly choose to work in these shelters because they do care about animals and they do want to help them. Euthanasia is not an easy task for them. Most people, what they learn about operation of a gas chamber is putting the animal in, lock the chamber door, switch, turn the switch on and quickly walk away. They don't want to see or hear animals inside chamber whining or scratching the chamber walls. According to AVMA, American Veterinary Medical Association, direct observation is required during inhalation process. The process of observing animals be, become disoriented, converse, vocalize, and then die can increase the stress levels and cause depression in shelter workers. According to AVMA guidelines, gas chamber, gas chamber is unsuitable for routine euthanasia in shelter settings. Still, Green River Animal Control, according to Green River Animal Control policies, it is their primary method of euthanasia. Erin Lyle, who was a supervisor at Gillette, at Gillette Animal Control, mentioned to me in an email that her motivation to remove gas chamber from their facility was due to her background in euthanizing hundreds of animals in a gas chamber and the fear, trauma, and stress it caused her. In addition to this, uh, this method also is cost ineffective. According to a study done by American Humane Association using data from an animal sheltering organization, cost of euthanasia by the injection, that's EBI, is lower than gas euthanasia. Tesh, Tesha Vinch, a Cheyenne animal control veterinarian wrote in an email to me last year that euthanasia solution for a 50 pound animal can cost up to $1.60. And aggressive or stressful animals can be sedated before euthanizing them. Sedate, sedatives can be given by orally by food, in food or by darting. Other restraint methods can be used as restraint poles or syringe poles or darts, et cetera. Mr. Mayor, animal shelter is supposed to be a role model to humane treatment of animals. Unfortunately, the stigma of a gas chamber is so damaging to the reputation of the shelter that when people find out that the shelter uses a gas chamber to gas animals as a method of euthanasia, most people hesitate to go to that place. And that can affect negatively uh, to their donations, adoption rates, and number of volunteers and visitors coming to the shelter. We really wish we never have to euthanize any shelter animals, but unfortunately the need of euthanasia will exist till, till the programs like TNR, trap, neuter, and release, and, uh, and spay and neuter are made mandatory by law. Until then, euthanasia by injection is the most humane method preferred by most major animal or welfare organizations, including the National Animal Shelter Association, the Association of Shelter Veterinarians, and Humane Society of United States. In fact, Humane Society of United States has also offered $3,000 grant to Green River Animal Control to remove the gas chamber and to help the staff uh, transition to EBI. Since this issue is a matter of significant and growing public concern, we respectfully urge you to remove the carbon monoxide gas chamber from the Green River Animal Control Facility. Now I'll play three and a half minutes slide show to the related to the topic and the photos and the description of the animals in the slideshow are obtained from open public records. And then I'll stand for any questions. Thank you.
Um, does anybody on the council want to make any comments? Okay, we'll take this matter under advisement, okay? I'm going to take a short recess for a minute or two and, and uh, allow the folks that, um, that are here, if you'd like to, probably don't want to sit through the meeting. So if you'd like to, you can. We'll, again, we'll take this matter under advisement, okay? <clears throat> You're welcome. Okay, moving on, item six, citizen requests and other communications. Now is the appropriate time for citizens in the audience to be recognized and to speak on items both on the agenda and of general concern for them as citizens in Green River. Are there any citizens in the audience that are not on the agenda that would like to address the council? Seeing none. I'm going to open a public hearing. This is a public hearing to consider a request for a special use permit filed by Wyoming.com. The purpose of this public hearing is to give the public a chance to voice any questions or concerns regarding the requested special use permit. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the special use permit by Wyoming.com? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Resolutions, consideration of a resolution to approve a special use permit filed by Wyoming.com. The, the petitioner Wyoming.com requested consideration for a special use permit approval for the construction of a 40 foot high speed internet tower to be constructed on top of Man's Face Mountain. The property is located within the Bronze Belt Conservation Overlay District and therefore requires a special use permit review and approval. Therefore, it has to come to us. Is there anybody that wants to speak to this issue? Okay, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor. Councilman Chetron. I move to approve the resolution granting approval of the special use permit filed by Wyoming.com for the construction of a 40 foot high speed internet tower to be located in the Bronze Belt Conservation Overlay District within the 10 by 10, 10 foot by 10 foot leased area on Man's Face Mountain, Green River, Wyoming, pending legal approval. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Chetron, seconded by Councilman Berg. Is there any questions, comments, discussions, Council? Seeing none. Oh, pardon me, Councilman Bushman. Um, I did have a couple questions, and I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to email it. I didn't have a chance. Um, is there anyone from Wyoming.com besides Amy? Could... Thank you, Mr. Mayor and the Council. Um, my name is Kim Kobe with uh, Wyoming.com. I'm with the VP of Operations. Right. Thank you so much for, um, and this is more for general public anyways, but I'm curious myself. Um, so the high speed internet, you know, is it um, going from, because right now it's about 12.52, that's the speed right now, the, M the, um, the M MPPS. Uh, the megabits, yeah, per, megabits second. per second. Is that going to go to 50? Um, correct. Our base package will be 50 megabits per second up to 100 megabits per second out of the gate. And then as 
technology changes and things progress, we'll continue to upgrade the infrastructure okay. for higher speeds. Okay. I think, uh, and is it um, predominantly around here, like the internet, and that's pretty much it, not just cable or fiber optics at this Correct. point? At this point, it would be wireless internet, okay. so similar to like your dish TV. Um, and then we also uh, provide white, um, phone services over that internet service. So for people that have distance issues with their um, cable providers or phone providers, we'll be able to provide voice services over that internet connection as well. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's all I had there. All right. Any other questions, council? Thank you very much. Thank you, Baron, council. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, um, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item nine, council action items. Consideration to approve the sculpture donation to the City of Green River by the Green River Arts Council. This is consideration to accept a donation from the Green River Development Fund of two Heron art sculptures located on Expedition Island. Go ahead, Brad. Good evening, Mayor and Council Brad Rennie, Parks and Recreation Director. So if you attended the Art on the Green event last August, which turned out great, um, these two sculptures were unveiled. They're, they're located in front of the pavilion. The funds were raised by the Arts Council. There was a lot of um, sweat equity there and the landscaping in front of the pavilion that they improved and teamed up with our park staff. And um, they were purchased out of the development fund, out of, out of funds they've raised over the years at Art on the Green. And they would like to donate them to the city, mainly so that they're covered by insurance. Okay, sounds good. Is there any questions or comments for Brad? Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's have a motion then. Mayor. Councilman Kilpack. I move to accept the Green River Development Fund donation of herons to the include in the city of Green River sculpture showcase property. A second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Kilpack, seconded by Councilman Bushman. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Item B, consideration to approve change order number one for the 2021 Cape Seal project. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Mark Weston, School Public Works Director. You know, at the end of these projects, I like to bring you deductive change orders and that's usually my goal, And but that doesn't always happen. Um, in this particular case, we had our Cape Seal project that's been covering, uh, and I spoke about this at the State of the City, we covered 5.8 miles of, of city streets with uh, Cape Seal, which was basically a, a chip seal with a slurry seal on top. But there was a phase that occurred before those two phases, and that was the asphalt patching. And basically, we found a portion of the street that needed to be replaced, that uh, the, asphalt, the existing asphalt structure needed to be taken out and removed. We did that before we did the chip seal. We had an estimated quantity of that and we exceeded that estimated quantity. Um, I'd like to say that we did a better job on this one. We're gonna have a better product because we did that. And therefore we need to bring forward this uh, additive change order at the end of this job. Okay, thanks, Mark. Does anybody have any questions of Mark? Councilman Zimmerman. Uh, Mark, I was on a couple of the streets and uh, so far, boy, that's the first time I saw this Cape Seal product. and boy, excellent job. I mean, we're going to see how it wears, yeah. we're, but boy, is it a nice, we're, nice product. We're optimistic um, and looking forward. We're going to be watching this real hard to see the long-term performance. We'd, we'd uh, like to be able to apply this elsewhere. Excellent job. You want to give Andy some kudos on that. 5.8 miles. That's pretty, that, that's a significant improvement. Beg your pardon? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we've got Great. about 60 miles total and we've got 5.8. So you know, ideally, if we could get this kind of a regular funding thing, we could get on a cycle and touch every street in a decade. Well, that would be my long-term goal. Yeah, let's get the other 44 miles done. What's um, Okay, we'll entertain a motion. Councilman Zimmerman. Mayor, thank you. I move to approve change order number one for the 2021 Cape Seal project in the amount of $24,650 <clears throat> and authorize the mayor to sign the change order. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Zimmer and seconded by Councilman Shetron. Is there any further discussion? 
Mayor. Yes, sir. I just have one comment. I, I should have said it before, but I, it just came to my mind. That, and this is a positive comment that I had a number of citizens call and complain about when just the rocks went down. Mm -hmm. And after they come back and finish and put the sill on, uh, everyone that had talked to me before really liked how it looked when it was finished. So yeah. they, they was very pleased with it. Yeah, th this is a multi-step process. And, and if you only look at it halfway, <laughs> a lot of our projects, if you look at them halfway when they're done, they, they don't look so good. But uh, we like it when we're, the finished product is what we're looking for. So. Is there striping still to be done? There's a little bit of striping to be done. Um, the striping truck needed some repairs. So we um, have been out of striping for a couple of days. Upland still needs to be striped. Okay. And we'll be doing the striping on that. Actually, I've been talking to the chief. We're going to, um, we've been marking that out uh, to do a, the two-way left turn lane all the way through. So as you drive Upland, you'll see that. And we're kind of seeing how that wears. Um, so it's a good opportunity to test it before we put the paint down. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Any other questions, council? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item C, consideration to submit a FEMA hazard mitigation program notice of interest to the Wyoming Office of Homeland Security. Mayor and Council, Ryan Russ, Government Affairs and Grants. As you remember last council meeting, we discussed moving forward with looking for some funding to make some repairs to the Kildare Wetlands diversion structure. Um, in those discussions, it was identified that the FEMA hazard mitigation program might be a good source of funding. Um, they're accepting a notice of interest right now, and uh, we're applying for $75,000 with $25,000 matching in, from the city for a total of $100,000 for the design and engineering portion of that program. And I'll answer any questions. Anybody have any questions? Again, pretty straightforward. Um, okay, we'll entertain a motion. Mayor. Councilman Chetron. I move to approve the memorandum of understanding between the city of Green River, city of Rock, oh, wrong one, sorry. <laughs> I, I move to authorize the submission of a FEMA hazard mitigation program notice to interest in the Wyoming Office of Homeland Security. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Chetron, seconded by Councilman Zimmerman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Nice job, Mike. Um, consideration of an MOU between the City of Green River, the City of Rock Springs, and Sweetwater County. Go ahead, Reed. Mayor, Council, I'll take this one. Um, we've been in discussion for quite some time regarding um, putting together the um, education material, if you will, uh, also with the voting uh, ability for um, the sp uh, general purpose tax. Um, we had done a, an MOU that we wanted to enter in before, um, near sometime near the end of August. We ended up coming, um, getting a, we had to get work on getting some uh, legal uh, approval from it. We had the county um, attorney. Um, both Air Mosby and De Leon, as well as um, Rick Beckwith from Rock Springs, Galen from our side, to look over it and make sure that the MOU, in terms of how we stated that within there, was going to be okay, and to make sure that the money that would be spent would not be on marketing and how we could do the dollars, but it would be specific to uh, educational dollars. Uh, so this MOU is a result of that. They did talk with the Attorney General. The Attorney General, um, with the comments have come through, we are now working on um, slightly revisions to the um, educational material that we're putting together for that, which um, we should be receiving or seeing, um, I would hope by tomorrow um, on that. We were pretty close to getting it done, but we needed to get through this process first. So, Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Councilman Berg. When are these going to be brought to the county and Rock Springs agendas? Um, they are tonight, Rock Springs, and as well as, and the county had already approved it today. Councilman Kilpack. I just have one question for you, Rita. And if I'm seeing this right, and it's a excise sales tax, <clears throat> excess sales tax of 1%, that also means that anybody driving through the county and buying anything there at the same time, even though they don't live in Green River or don't live in Sweetwater County, 
they're participating in helping us with this tax. Uh, correct? That's correct, Councilman Kilpack. Any um, the dollars that are being done um, would be similar to any of our sales taxes. They are distributed at this point, um, specifically more towards the fifth penny that we do, but or similar to the, any of the special purpose tax that we do for specific purpose um, projects that we do on the six penny. It's a similar situation uh, broken out in that way. Um, and we, you know, through just as Wyoming tourism um, discusses how much tourist dollars bring here, how much that pays towards um, the revenue that we receive, um, we've kind of equated across the state somewhere in the low 20% range um, is um, beneficial to us through those who come through. Yeah. So if I'm understanding what you're saying is uh, the tourists will pay around 20 to 30% of this. Uh, yeah, I don't have that exact number, but it's, but it's, it's, it's somewhere in that range that... So. I, Anyone traveling through here, if they're you know if they're buying the goods that are taxed from that standpoint, yes. Well, if I had eighty cents and I give it to you, would you give me a dollar? <laughs> I'd take that any day. Depends what and the bet is, Councilman exactly Kilpatrick. What's happening? <laughs> exactly. Because we're everybody's helping us, and it's an excellent, excellent, excellent tax, and we need to really think serious about. It. Yeah, we do plan on putting together our groups to start going and educating as needed through that. Um, our time our time frame was originally set to be starting on the 17th of September. So we're just a few days off from that. Um, I feel we're uh, still, you know, we're still in, in from what we wanted to do um, in moving that forward. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments from council? Seeing none, let's I'll entertain a motion. Mayor. Councilman Kilpack. I move to approve the MOU between the city of Green River, city of Rock Springs and Sweetwater County. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Kilpack, a second by Councilman Shutron. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Let's have a motion to approve the consent agenda, if that's your wish. Mayor. Councilman Shetron. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Shetron, seconded by Councilman Berg. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. City Administrator. Thanks again. Um, just a couple of quick updates. We did do the State of the City. Um, uh, Councilperson Bushman was there um, in support. We, uh, I think it went pretty good. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of questions. We discussed everything from the Cape Seal projects to wastewater treatment plant uh, and a little bit about the uh, um, general purpose tax. Um, so I thought that, that went pretty good. The We have a workshop next week as a reminder. That's the one you guys wanted to review um, just where we're at with the deer and, and looking at some of the issues in, in terms of if, which way we want to move forward, if any, um, or just, and we'll give some kind of update on that. I'll have materials to you here during the week. Um, we also are scheduling the workshop for October 12th. Um, Dennis, I mean, uh, Mr. Freeman would like to come and talk regarding the green belt and the results that were done on that. And then we can possibly add something else to that agenda, but we'll go through from the um, I did want to, um, the, tonight's the bonfire. If you happen to go by and see a big blaze going on, it's not the high school on fire. <laughs> um, but uh, they are, yeah, darn it, no. Um, but they're, uh, they're having that. Um, we had our, our um, the, the chiefs um, heading up there to, already to help work on that. They were help making sure that the council moved the um wood around so that it wouldn't you know we've had some issues where it's, it got so hot up there that it's melted some or you know some of the light poles and stuff so we have to make sure we're we're up there doing a good job and uh, uh one of the comments i just i wanted to share on the the cape seal project it was i was driving with the um some of the kids if you will and, and they're you know, looking at that and they, they do like the new road but they just you know the, because there's like three black stripes especially on upland going they just where do we drive? That's it. You know, they're trying to figure. It was pretty funny because so we definitely need to get the striping done on that. But uh, that was good. And uh, just as a heads up, you know, COVID issues still out there. It's um, impacting um, 
drastically at the hospital, for example, and 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 uh, we want to make sure that uh, we can do what we can on that. It's um, we, if there's any life-saving events that are not COVID, we want to be able to address those issues as well. So any help we can get on that, and hopefully, and we aren't seeing the exponential numbers, but they are still seeing some really high numbers where they're having to address same day surgery areas and stuff now too. So it's, um, and Mark shared with us today, the number, you know, regarding the stuff that we look at from the treatment plant. And, uh, it's definitely, it's, it's at the, it's at the peak numbers again, from what we had previously seen. So hopefully we're going to see a, a cap on that, but that's all I have. Thank you, Reed. Mr. City Administrator, or pardon me, Mr. City Attorney, sorry. I have no report tonight, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Galen. So where did we start? Let's start with Councilman Kilpack. I have nothing tonight. Oh, thank you, Gary. Councilman Jost. Um, just want to say I participated in the cleanup on and with Sherry on last week or two weeks ago now, I guess. And it was a nice crowd showed up. There were a lot of people there. They did a lot of stuff. We were pulling weeds out of the uh, bike park. There was quite a few weeds, but people I was working with were some people that just showed up. Nice people I've never met before. It's nice to be out and about doing that stuff. Um, yesterday, I attended the joint communications meeting <clears throat> that they have every month or so i guess every yeah once a month i think they meet and they had some interesting stuff there <clears throat> they're also are concerned about the sales tax or the public safety tax we're talking about so that's went on um and um you got this oh and i was going to thank um john owens and his kids he had three boys there that were pretty good sized kids. They were all working hard and they did a lot of work, those, the four of them. And I think they had a couple of buddies with them that helped out. So they did a lot of stuff. It's good to see them up there. And then um, another thing I was thinking of, I was gonna say, forgot that now, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, it's this thing right here. The animal control is having a vaccine day on Saturday to, uh, promote vaccines and worming and other things, dog health, animal health, not just dogs, but all dog animals. So that goes on from um, 10 o'clock to one o'clock out down there at the animal control place. That's it, thank you. Thank you, George. Councilwoman Bushman. Thank you. Um, one thing let's see I have is that I went to the Wyoming Veterans Commission meeting this morning for about an hour and uh, quite a bit of discussion to where they were speaking about um, um, how they're gonna stand about the property tax reduction, the um, regards to the handicap parking, um, various things. So um, I just wanted to let you know it's, I was there. Um, they may be approaching city council possibly in regards to the funding of the two military, not us volunteers, the honor guard. We do to get a stipend about $50 for each funeral, but um, they may be um, lessening or doing something about the fundage for the two actual military guys that come down for the, doing the flag ceremony for the, for the uh, military. So they may approach us maybe from the state level. Anyways, um, and then tomorrow I'm going to be going to the Wyoming Business Council meet and greet for Josh uh, Doral. That's going to be there. So I'm sure quite a few of us will probably be there. Maybe. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. At the Broadway Theater? Is that? Yeah. It's from five to seven. Yeah. So I'll be attending that. And then, um, hey, today's the last day of summer. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. It feels like it too. Um, yeah. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Councilman Chetron. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Golden Hour Senior Center and the little event that they held uh, earlier this week for the open enrollment for Medicare and Medicaid for the seniors here in town. We took my mom up there to kind of wade through some of the trap doors and some of the things and without having a little bit of their guidance there, that stuff can be a little bit uh, overwhelming. So big shout out to them for taking care of that and help people out. Thanks, Mike. Councilman Burke. 
I have no reports, Mike. Th thank you, Councilman. Councilman Zimmerman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, first house is going in right now in Ranchview. So we want to see some more rooftops in our area. First house uh, was out there today. It's dug. The foundation's going in. They're getting ready to pour. So that's sort of exciting. That's that newest development out there off of Gansling Road near Loves. So, and yeah, it's near that. Is that the name of that golf course? Um, and uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is we had our uh, our spaceport airport meeting, our, our our latest one just on Monday, yesterday, and uh, did some brainstorming. We've got some exciting ideas. We're already looking at 2022. Right, Mark? And I think Mark has something for the council members. Is that right, Mark? That, that, that's correct, uh, Councilman Zimmerman. I know everybody wanted to come to Spaceport Days, but I know not everybody was able to come. So I've got a little something for you from Spaceport Days. Thank you. I know. You were there. <laughs> Pretty nice. Thank you, Mark. 28. I've got lots of them. Oh, yeah. We, we got, I got lots of them. So if you have any pilots, um, let them know. We'll get them. We want to make sure that these get in the hands of pilots. Cool. Thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And the only thing I have is we had a, a meeting of the steering committee of the Sweetwater County Outdoor Recreation Committee which again is uh, three people, three staff people from the state parks talking about all kinds of different projects, recreation projects within Sweetwater County. I think 13 or so have been identified. And I would just encourage everybody that, anybody that would like to, that on September 29th, there's a, a Zoom meeting and, uh, I believe I've sent the invitation out to you guys so that you everybody has the Zoom. Um, if anybody doesn't have it, let me know, okay? Because we need to, uh, there's five or six of the projects here in Green River. You know, everything from uh, improvements to the Green Belt, the, the uh, Diversion Dam, uh, the river, itself so we talk about the green belt the blue belt is the river there's all kinds of different projects and and it's it just it's it's increasingly getting different funding sources coming up the governor is now getting involved with it and looking at even covid monies and different things that could potentially be put into it so the potential to do something in it fixing our bike parks mapping the whole areas as some people have expressed councilwoman bushman has expressed an interest in there's all kinds of potential fixing the diversion dam up properly just another source of funding so um i encourage you guys to participate and if you have any questions let me know that's kind of my job on the steering committee to communicate with people and anybody that you would like to also have included and, and be getting those notices let me know okay with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Yes. I need to ask one question. Sure. And I forgot. I have, I've had a couple of people ask me about the bike park when the, they're going to be putting in that racetrack. Do, do you have any ideas on that? Uh, that should be presented in the first council meeting in October. Um, they were working around some of the contract issues, and they still want to be able to address some of the work here. Um, this fall before they go into it, but we we discussed that in the in the meeting department okay. meeting this morning, so they should have that here on the next meeting. Okay, thank you. I move to adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.